My name is Valery Kravchuk. I work as a principal support engineer for MariaDB Corporation, and today I'm going to speak about some uh, advanced uh, use cases for BPF trace utility when applied to complex code base like uh, the one from MariaDB Ser. It's not the first time uh, that I try to speak about BPF trace, and I have a very hard uh, task today to fit uh, everything I would like to say into this short 20 minutes. Uh, talk, uh, so I decided not to repeat myself uh, and concentrate on uh, my new findings and some details that had never been shared previously. Uh, I refer to my previous talks here and there, I refer to documentation, and you can see on slides that whenever I uh, have some word uh, underlined, it's actually a link to a more detailed description, uh, official documentation, blog post, GitHub repository, or whatever. So, basically. Uh, I would like to cover uh, some problems one may encounter while building BPF trace from source code, and I will start with the explanation why this is essential. Uh, and uh, I'll discuss a few uh, details that I previously claimed as problematic, or at least never tried with BPF trace, uh, at least when applied to a complex uh, code base like uh, MariaDB server. I'll also try to push BPF trace to the limits, uh, find, try to find out how many probes I can really create on my hardware, uh, and uh, how to make a good use of BPF trace so that it gets a chance to uh, actually replace uh, other tools for some tasks, like replacing GDB uh, in a more lightweight uh, tracing manner uh, would be my final goal eventually. So, just to put you back in context, uh, this slide is mostly not new. Uh, to remind you what BPF trace is, uh, modern Linux kernels uh, include so called extended uh, Boland pack packet filter system that was initially developed to trace network packages, then was extended for tracing everything inside the kernel, and then eventually was extended to trace everything uh, covering the entire application stack, from application code, to system calls, to different subsystems in the kernel, to even hardware. Uh, all that in a familiar manner, uh, in the programming language uh, of BPF Trace that resembles AWK and D language of D-Trace utility from Solaris, the uh, first one that introduced the concept of dynamic tracing uh, into uh, operating systems. So, uh, BPF trace is the programming language that allows you to define some uh, sequence of actions uh, to be executed when some probe is hit. The probe is actually some event, and the probe covers everything from kernel trace points, hardware counters, uh, there are periodic probes, profiling probes, uh, special purpose probes, uh, kernel probes. Uh, we will be mostly interested in user probes at the beginning and at the end, which functions naturally, because that's where we would like to to, to uh, add uh, additional information collection or additional information output when uh, software operates. So, basically, how you start with BPF trace? You have to install it, you can use packages in all modern Linuxes, or you can build it from GitHub source, and then you can do many cool things that are covered among other sources in my own blog posts tagged with uh, BPF trace. Uh, stay tuned, I have actually more than uh, at the moment of creating these slides, so let's move on. Uh, on my system I have several versions of BPF Trace. Uh, this software is quickly developing, so as you can see from Git log, uh, currently uh, the last cha change was done on uh, the 10th of January this year, so it's under active development. For this reason, you may want to get the latest version. For all purposes, uh, I've already used BPF Trace 4, uh, uh, versions of like 0.9.4 on newer are usually good enough. All the versions are really problematic, so you should just try whatever you want, and if you uh, do not get the expected results, you get errors, it makes sense to rebuild from source. So I have actually three versions. One very old actually is provided by the uh, Ubuntu packages. Another one is like my working version that I built um, probably in May last year and used until recently, 0.13. I'm satisfied with it, but I tried to build a new one as well, and eventually I succeeded. It's 0.14 and it's ready to use with uh, newer uh, toolchain uh, and uh, recent kernels and recent operating systems with many issues resolved, bug fixes, and so on. Uh, 
So, uh, you may have to build from source if you need some new features or bug fixes. Alternative is to use uh, the Docker images that uh, the creators of BPF Trace produce as part of continuous integration efforts. So, you can just follow these links and see how you can get the best from both worlds, the recent version, and no builds. Why I say that uh, it's the best of both worlds? Uh, it turned out, and it happened to me previously over the last two years, that uh, yet another new version of BPF Trace is not easy to build. Uh, you hit errors, problems, known issues, unknown issues, incompatibilities when you try it. So I previously described that here and there for different versions of Fedora, including detailed build steps. Another part of the problem is the documentation that you have install a document from GitHub does not cover all the details pro properly. Some of them are missing. The most important detail that is clearly missing is that whenever you build recent BPF trace, you uh, usually have to build recent uh, BPF uh, trace compiler uh, collection tools, so-called BCC packages from GitHub. It's even under faster development. And when you build it, uh, make sure to include all the submodules after you uh, checked out the latest uh, source code of the tool itself. So, uh, make sure to test what, what you build before you install it over existing uh, packages or previous builds. Uh, and it turned out that with recent versions you may again have to uh, do a lot of manual hacking depending on uh, LLVM and Clang versions used. Some of these uh, problems are still open issues in the uh, GitHub projects. Uh, long story short, a long story will be eventually presented in the blog post. Probably one, maybe more. So they are resolvable. And I get a uh, recent version uh, built and used it for the examples here. Uh, one of the problems is that uh, newer versions may require a uh, newer Clang and LLVM version that you may have by default. So while keeping several versions of BPF Trace concurrently, I ended up with what I called an LLVM hell, uh, two, if not three different LLVM environments. Uh, I need older one for older version to work and for my Ubuntu to be operational, and I need newer one, LLVM 10 namely, and Clang 10, uh, to be able to build. Moreover, uh, in such a situation, in, in not a clean environment, in an extended environment like that, you may have to point out which LLVM to use. There is a define for that for CMake, and you may even after that manually hack some of the files because CMake is not smart enough to, uh, even for clean builds, to distinguish in between 7, 10, and whatever version. So again, these are details. But eventually you will get latest and greatest version, and that's what I suggest you to try next to the version provided from your packages. So, uh, one of the uh, checks that I did over last year with BPF Trace is how many probes I can realistically attach. Uh, lame uh, approach was to attach to every function, star here matches every function in the MariaDBD binary. I used 10.6. I ended up with uh, almost 3,500 probes. And that's too much. By default, you can uh, attach at most uh, 512 probes. There is a nice uh, suggestion and there is an environment variable uh, that allows you to define more probes. When I tried that, it actually started to work, but then it hit uh, segmentation fault. Probably too much memory were used for the 4 gigabytes I have in total on that uh, small laptop. So, attaching, lamely attaching a uh, probe to every uh, function in MariaDB server code may not work because of memory limitations, and it may not work for a different reason. When I try to reduce the number of functions to a smaller value, like 1000, including do, or somewhere in the function name, I hit yet another problem that some of the functions are not traceable. So, I suspect that eventually you will need to build a list of explicit, uh, even with a lot of memory, explicit functions you would like to trace or subsets of them. With smaller subsets everything works, and that test ended up with proof of concept that showed that BPF tracing can be used as a simple version of code coverage testing. So I can find out how many times each function I trace was executed. The program is quite simple. I have an associative array count, func uh, resolves to a function name for the probe specific one, and I just increase it. They initialized by zeros by default, and at the end of the program, when I stop it by hitting Ctrl C uh, with some test running in the background, I have this map this associative array nicely printed for me, so I know which functions were called and how many times. Good one, I think. The whole idea to use BPF Trace for uh, code coverage testing was uh, inspired by one of my colleagues in development in MariaDB. Next, 
Developers asked me about dynamic tracing tools, but by default, they use a not so dynamic approach. Uh, often they prefer to work with debug binaries, but even with the non debug binaries, they use uh, a real debug. In case of Linux, it would be GDB. And why they do that? Because inside GDB, you can get uh, almost everything. The thing is, GDB knows the source code in details, GDB understands. Uh, C++ classes, structures, and everything. So as uh, this slide illustrates, if you, for example, set a breakpoint on some function like lock rec lock, it's request for row level locking in ODB. You can uh, see uh, when you hit the breakpoint, uh, see the values of all the arguments, and if they are complex structures, you can find out the type of the structure uh, for, for this point. You can the reference, uh, you can get hints, you just type the beginning of the command in GDB, uh, click on tab and it's completed for you, suggested some completions, so it works. Uh, also, this slide illustrates the fact that even for such simple things as indexes and tables, the structures can be deeply nested and quite complicated. There are many fields that I do not print. I was interested in what index of what table the lock is requested. That's all for now. But this uh, is going to be complicated. In GDB, it's all easily doable. It's still programmable. You can uh, create Python scripts inside, you can use it in a batch mode. So can we get something similar in BPF trace programs? Because we need it, otherwise BPF trace not a replacement, no, no matter how cool or dynamic it is. So uh, there is a need to define structures. Uh, actually, uh, BPF trace supports include directive similar to C preprocessor and allows to include a literal header. And in many examples, you may see that they include uh, Linux kernel headers to get uh, simple enough C structures of uh, different arguments of function calls. This is not going to work with MariaDB. So even if I found out where in the code I can uh, you get the definition of some of the structures previously uh, listed uh, for the probe I'm interested in, a simple uh, attempt to attach a probe like that ends up with a uh, first problem is that uh, you may not know where to find the header. Uh, if you will put a full path name here, it does not work. Uh, you can provide minus i as expected a path name to the header, but headers are deeply nested in MariaDB. So while the one may be found, another one it refers to may not be found. So you can end up with many includes. But even if you manage to, to, to list all the paths, it's doable, just complicated with trial and error. So you may still uh, get uh, definitions of structure, struct, uh, that is not understood by BPF trace. In this case, even simple static uh, uh, specificator of storage class for the uh, variable is not allowed. It's even worse with C++ classes, virtual member functions, friends, and whatever modern stuff you can find there. So, uh, basically, uh, as you may not be able to uh, include MariaDB headers directly, you need to create a replacement for them, and uh, it's an ideal uh, moment to simplify them. The idea is like that. Uh, you can find out in GDB the size of each item, and you need to dereference only some of them for your probe. So, your task is to define items maybe similar to the real ones, but at least of the same size as real ones. So you can get the offset to a real thing and the data type that is compatible with the real thing. Based on this idea, I've created uh, a test uh, program, which is detailed in this blog post, that allows me to print the details of locks, uh, so including uh, lock mode, including name of the table and uh, name of the index, by the reference and arguments and custom them to appropriate structures. So you can see a lot of details, but basically it works. Uh, if for some reason I need to uh, trace a class member, there is yet another problem which is expected actually. You cannot literally use uh, the uh, class member function name with double columns because colon is a separator uh, in the probe syntax, so you have errors as a result. The solution is also straightforward and known from per profile uh, and from ftrace from all dynamic tracing tools. You should use a mangled name and you can get a proper mangled name for different, uh, using different techniques, for example from objdump. So the mangled name is here, I can use it literally in the probe and it works. Uh, 
The details about the probe are not relevant, but there is a blog post explaining what I was doing in Paraffin request uh, for yet another fellow developer. What's important here is that we also can use the address. So this hexademical address of the function can be used in the probe. And you can feel free to do so without uh, any chances to break anything, because if the address is not correct, like here I deliberately added one at the end, there is a check. You cannot attach somewhere uh, in the middle of assembly instruction. So you will get error message about the improper offset if you my default. So it's safe. Now, question is, having all that in mind, uh, there is yet another interesting use case for perf probes, for F-trace probes, when you can attach the probe not only at the beginning of the function to enter the function, not only at the end of function, return probe, but somewhere in between. So basically, you can add a probe in between for, for each assembly instruction you have, but you need to find the proper offset and then add that offset to the uh, hexademical address of uh, the function you are probing. How to find the offset? If you are a smart developer, you can use assembly, uh, you can read assembly uh, uh, commands uh, that are created uh, based on your C or C++ code, and then uh, if you can identify uh, the proper assembly part, you can see the decimal uh, offset, in uh, just disassemble command in GDB and add it, convert it to hex, add it to the base address and enjoy what actually you get. So it's base address, you add the probe and you get the address. If you are less smart, there are uh, better commands for this. Like here, for example, I've used the command with uh, slash m modifier, which shows me uh, C C++ source code additionally. So I can just move on, find a source code line the way I would like to add a probe, like for example here. I am interested in why not something like that. Sorry, it's a bit scrolled past what I am ne needing here. Huh. Yeah, so here it is. Basically, I would like to add the probe. Let me do it a bit later and then scroll. So I'm interested in a probe for this line uh, because here I have a packet and my idea, for example, it's yet another test. Uh, I would like to print a local variable called packet. Uh, and it's uh, fully formed at this moment. So uh, if you were careful, where is the scroller? I'm not sure. So uh, the offset of 175 was also visible there. So let me not try to improvise, but move on. So uh, one way uh, is to use disassembly and read the code and match it to the C code. Another uh, option how to resolve this problem is cheating. You can just use perf probe. Perf user has a convenient uh, dash dash line command that show each and every traceable uh, part uh, as an offset in lines from the beginning of the source code of the function. And I can just identify that line 120 is where I need a probe. I add the probe and then I can check it in the syskernel tracing file system that is automatically mounted and I can get the address. So this is the same address that we actually got from the assembly language as well, uh, which is also interesting for our next uh, slide is uh, from this very probe, uh, if you put a reference to a local variable there and perf, uh, I know it from experience, perf can resolve it. So it resolves it to something that actually shows where this local variable is stored. It's stored in the register, uh, R10, and here it's converted to a string to be printed. So if my goal is to find out how to uh, get the value of some local variable, not a parameter of the function, uh, I can just rely on perf. And in case of BP BPF trace, I can access any register. It's a great part of the knowledge. It's often missed that there is a reg function, uh, embedded function in BPF trace that allow you to get the value from any register actually without uh, adding kernel probes, which are also possible uh, for, for this same task. So here I am just printing the source code of the SQL statement executed, passed uh, to the do command, nothing fancy, uh, but it's uh, like a low weight, uh, uh, general query log at your uh, fingertips. Reg function is cool, read about it. I'm not sure how much DBAs appreciate this approach, but they should appreciate the uh, almost 
uh, non-existing performance impact of good BPF trace programs. But developers should be happy, both with reference to assembly ability to get registers and everything needed. So that's all I would like to say today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks to MariaDB Foundation for their efforts in keeping this MariaDB uh, dev room uh, for the third year at FOSDEM already. And in case you hit any problem with MariaDB, report a bug. In case you hit any problem with BPF trace, report a bug. Now I'm ready for your questions and answers. Let's do it. Thank you.